The documentary The Bridge was made by filmmaker Eric Steele. It was filmed mostly in 2004 and 2005, and it came out in 2006. It has lived this amazing life of passing through generation to generation uh, of individuals because it, it, it has this lifespan that has just continued on. Uh, it still showed around the world. For, for every day, for 24 hours, uh, for an entire year, Eric Steele and his film crew filmed from the left and the right side of the Golden Gate Bridge. They filmed people dying off of the bridge. It wasn't voyeuristic. It wasn't invasive. They just captured the truth mm -hmm. because it needed to be told. Every time they saw someone they thought was going to attempt to die, they called the bridge patrol. They saved over six lives. Wow, One person, nice. three times. One person who now has two kids and a husband and is living very well. That's wonderful. And so the film uh, is, a, is, a, is a documentary that interviews people that have been close to those people who died. Uh, it interviewed me and my father after my survival. Uh, and it, it just, it, it, the film never tells you what to think, where to, where to look. It says basically, look what's happening here at the Golden Gate Bridge. What would you do? And that year, I think there were, there were uh, between 27 and maybe, maybe 24 and 27 deaths that year. Possibly. Think about it like this. If there was any two-mile stretch of land, flat land, where someone was dying every 10 days, that would be stopped within a matter of weeks with whatever they could do to stop it. But because someone falls off a bridge into an abyss of water below and is never seen again, and washes up to shore and only the Marine coroner sees them, uh, they're somehow less important. People with mental struggles need to be thought of as human beings first and foremost, and not identified by that mental illness and by their actions of suicidal thought and action. It doesn't define a person, it just either makes you stronger or it takes you down a path which you can't return. But if more people understood it and empathized with it and reached out to those people in their time of need, if one person had said to me, are you okay, can I help you? I would have uh, begged them to get me off of that bridge and into his safe arms. Both of those things I've done uh, and had to happen to me, the, the not being able to pay for medications at certain points and the stopping medications when I thought I was cured. Yes leading me right down a dark tunnel straight into a psych ward. Yes. I've been in seven psych wards in less than nine years of my life up until 2011. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I've almost died by suicide many times. I've had what is called in the field chronic suicidal thoughts. Mm -hmm. But today I look at it a lot differently. I have my personal protectors, my team of people that I've delegated that, that when I am not self-aware, which is most of the time I am now, today, when I'm not self-aware, they're helping me by saying, Kevin, you're manic. Kevin, you're depressed. Kevin, we need to get you to a hospital. And so uh, it's about turning your life around, being honest within the disease and saying, I have it, I accept it, and I have to fight it and I have to treat it. Mm -hmm. Because the treatment is real, it's completely effective, and it can save your life. And having the people around you that you care about most dear know how to handle it when you go into an episode. All of these things play a huge part in your continued success within dealing with a severe mental illness.